The VolQuest Two Minute Drill is brought to you by Craven Wings. With Rob Lewis, Brent Hubs, VolQuest.com. Time for the Craven Wings full court press as Tennessee falls at Texas A&M by a score of 68 to 65. Don't forget, Craven Wings is continuing with their Grim Reaper Challenge. Third semifinal is this week at Seymour. That's on Saturday starting at 2 o'clock. That's coming up at Craven Wings at the Seymour location and that continual Grim Reaper Challenge. It was a Grim Reaper type night for Tennessee. In a lot of ways, Rob Lewis, in a lot of ways, Rob Lewis, you knew going into this game, somehow, some way, Tennessee had to limit some of A&M's opportunities at the free throw line. They couldn't. A&M made a, made a living there, and that was the difference in this basketball game point-wise. Yeah, A&M just, I mean, got there all night long. Um, you know, double Tennessee, more more than double Tennessee. Got them. And A&M had twice as many makes at 28 as Tennessee had attempts at 14. A&M's 28 to 34 there. Tennessee's 10 to 14. And, yeah, when you look at the box score, that's, I mean, that's – what jumps out at you and you know all that also had the effect that you know who were those fouls on i thought one of the biggest you know obstacles in the game for tennessee was was jonas adu who got off to a great start i look at the you know the stats five minutes in the game and jonas already has six points and five rebounds and you know tennessee's up 11 to three and then you know he's on the bench with his third foul you know before the 12 minute mark you know since the rest of the first half comes back in almost immediately picks up his fourth foul in the second half or excuse me his third foul to start the second half comes back in picks up his fourth foul sits for about eight minutes gets it, it, bottom line he played 16 minutes tonight and after that first five or six minutes did not score a point did not grab a rebound and I thought you know it was a small sample size but I really thought over in the you know in the first section of that game first you know six seven minutes I thought he was the most impactful player on the floor. Yeah, I mean, he he, he certainly moved, did a lot of things well on both ends of the floor. Rebounded the basketball, scored. I mean, the, the the you know the bigger thing about this basketball team right now, and you wrote this in four takes, is just kind of where they are uh, over the course of since going to Florida and, and losing that game at Florida. And and the hard thing about this basketball team to figure out is wh- where was that effort we saw tonight in Rupp Arena in the first half. You know what I mean? What, what, yeah. Why Why is the yo-yo there for Tennessee on whether or not they're going to show up ready to play and, and not show up ready to play? Look, I, you knew they were walking into a hornet's nest, right? That's a tough building to play when A&M's good. They play physical. I mean, Tennessee in the first half in particular matched it. I mean, to get that game to tied at the half with the foul trouble they had was, was really good. But, but then – you know, you look at them big picture, and they just nights where they no show. That this is the hardest team to figure out I've seen in a long time at Tennessee. Yeah, I I don't disagree. I mean, I mean, you, I mean, it's hard to believe that. I, I mean, I I don't I don't necessarily think Tennessee was ever the second best team in the country, but that's where they were when they started February, because of the body of work, you know, because of the people that they had beaten, and now you know, exactly three weeks later, I mean, you're sitting here not only you know. They're not not only they're not top two in the SEC. They, after tomorrow night, they they may not be top four. And yes, I mean the injury you can't ignore the injuries to to Cy and Julia. I mean that's part of it. But you know this is this is big boy athletics, and you don't get you don't get graded on a curve. You get graded on wins and losses. And, and Tennessee's lost four of their last five games now. How concerning is it that that neither one of those guys have gotten back at this point? We heard the Jimmy Dykes comment that he. Watched Joe Sian shoot around. He thought he would be able to go tonight. Surprised he wasn't able to play. Again, big picture takeaway here. How how concerning is it that this thing appears to be lingering, particularly with Joe Sian, who quite frankly has just been a slow healer since he's been at Tennessee? Yeah, I, I, Hubbard, I don't know. I mean, I would I would never speculate on what a kid's feeling like about whether he can go or not. I mean, that's just a that, that's a slippery slope, and uh, I would never go there. But I. Watching the two kids on Monday afternoon in practice, I, I thought they had a good chance of going. I mean, and again, they weren't doing five on five stuff, but they were working, in, you know, with the trainer, you know, kind of, you know, getting shadow guarded, face guarded, you know, two or three dribbles, pull up, lay up, you know, Josiah Ransom Stadium steps or arena steps on Monday. I mean, not like, you know, Rocky running up a mountaintop, but but he was, you know, he was jogging and, and putting pressure on it. So I, I thought they both had a chance to play tonight and it just – the way they looked to me on Monday, and again, not five on five, not you know, not getting banged and pushed around, but I, I thought that they both looked like they had a chance to play today. Given that, 
I, I mean, I think they have a real chance of playing on Sunday or on Saturday against South Carolina. But man, that's I mean, it, tonight really highlighted how much this team needs them or needs somebody because. Man, I mean, I'm sure we're probably going to talk about it, but rotation wise, Rick Barnes sent everybody a pretty clear message about what he felt or how he feels about everybody who's healthy and available right now outside of his starting five and, and Tobe Awaka. I mean, Awaka plays 26 minutes, Olivier plays 35 minutes. Um, I don't know that Tyreek Key would have, I mean, he played 18, but I don't know that that number would have gotten there if Sakai hadn't had some foul trouble. Yurosh barely got off the bench. I mean, I, he's, he's, he is, the head coach is tightening things up. Yeah, he has, and and you wonder a little bit about the the legs of Zakai, who's not played well the last couple of weeks. Is he a little bit beat up and a little bit wore out because of the number he, of minutes he's played, or is he just not shooting the ball particularly well? I mean, the thing about this team is, if they could, you know, if they could get Santi with with his feet set, then they had a great shot at at scoring in a possession. But those are few and far between. Hard for this team to score. It's been hard, but right now it's as hard as it's been for this team to score because Meshack's not a scorer. That's not what he does. He's got his role, and and he's playing it well on the defensive end. He's hustling, but he's not a great scorer. Um, And and then you look at where Tyree Key is right now. I mean, you feel like some lineups out there, they got one or two guys at most that can score for this team. They they don't seem very hard to guard right now. I mean, and and Zakai can – I mean, you know, Zakai is – a jitterbug. I mean, he can get by anybody, but he, and he's five nine. It's not like he's getting into the lane and you know finishing on his own. I mean, really. I mean, Josiah could do some of that, but really, Julian is the one guy on this team who can you know really you know start on the wing, take two dribbles, get in there, and either you know get to the rim or or get some contact. And yeah, I mean, he doesn't do it all the time. He's not all that aggressive, but I mean, you just don't have that on the wing right now. And those two guys are also two of your best offensive rebounds rebounders. I mean, Josiah is a, a right around a 35 percent three-point shooter just you know it's not like those guys are 20 point a game scorers but this team needs any kind of offense it can get and, and that shows up and I, I'll, I'll tip my cap to it tonight I, um i thought they guarded well against a, a texas a&m team that they're not a great shooting team but they can score as we've been talking about that they get to the line as, as much as anybody tennessee holds them to under 40 percent shooting on the night I, you know that's kind of a benchmark but um 34 free throws, man. It's hard to overcome that. Yeah, I mean, Tennessee won every statistical category when you look at it. Fewer turnovers. They rebounded the ball better. Uh, they they shot the basketball better. They made five more threes. They had a better shooting percentage. All those things. But but they couldn't keep Texas A&M off the line, which that's the best thing Texas A&M does. But Tennessee's battled foul trouble, Rob, the last few weeks, whether yep. it's Kai or some other guys. And, and I wonder if teams are attacking Tennessee different defensively that's creating some of that. If Tennessee is uh, losing, you know, are they losing their legs and they're not getting there as fast? I mean, why has this team become a little more foul prone um, to, to the last, I don't know, couple of weeks, five or six games? It feels like they, they've been more foul prone. I haven't looked at the numbers. Maybe they haven't been, but it feels like they have been compared to where well, they were earlier in the year. I, I do need to go back and look at the numbers. I'd like to look at it since they've been shorthanded without these two guys. I wonder if teams – have not been more mindful of trying to, you know, get into Tennessee because, you know, the, the bench is shortened or the or the depth, the the quality of depth isn't what it was before those two guys went to the bench. And was a guy, this is just my own opinion, but, you know, talking with some people around the program, I, you know, there's some speculation in this late. I wonder if there's not kind of a book out on him where, you know, coaches aren't telling their, hey, you know, do this, get into him, he'll get handsy. You know, if you if you frustrate him a little bit, you know he he'll, he'll you know you can get him to reach and get to pick up pick up a cheap one. I I just wonder if there's not been a little bit of that because you know he picks up his third one pretty quick in the second half tonight, right? You know, right on the hills of Adu. You know, obviously he played 23 minutes at Kentucky because of foul trouble, fouled out against Missouri. So it's happening so frequently. I wonder if coaches aren't you know kind of coaching their kids up to to try and you know force the issue with him. Yeah, that's, that's a great point. But yet here, here was Tennessee in the last thirty seconds in a in a one possession game. They they get a steal, great play by by Taylor to knock the ball away from from Santi after he got the steal. I mean, th- Tennessee had a chance, um, you know, w- which when you're shorthanded and you're on the road, that's what you're looking for. There, Tennessee couldn't finish it, and, and Tennessee's having a hard time rallying from behind and winning games late. They had, I think. Jimmy Dyke said on the broadcast they were 0 of 5, 0 for 5 now, I think, in games where they – 0 of 6 now. 
uh, or trailed in the last five minutes of the game or they were behind with five minutes to play. That's an alarming stat heading into postseason yep. play. But but Tennessee's effort was good. They gave themselves a chance to win shorthanded against the hottest one of the hottest teams in the league. Uh, but it's but it's frustration because everything feels hard for this team right now. It just feels extremely hard. hard. And, and I mean, when they were down fifty to forty one, Grant, with about what 12, you know, 12, 10 minutes left. I mean, I was I thought it was just time to pack the bus. Yeah. I mean, just I don't do. even just you know see if you can get back to Knoxville an hour earlier. You know, call call ahead to the airport and see if we can get cleared. And you know, you, you don't get any points for your or trophies for putting forth that kind of effort, but. They, they rallied back, and it was a one-point game on, on a couple of different occasions in the final five minutes. So, you know, I'll, I'll give them credit for that. I mean, you can't question this team's toughness or, or effort. But, man, they're just – they're hard to watch some nights, and, and, and tonight was one of those nights. Yep, and the question is now can they put that kind of effort up consistently, um, and, and can they do that to keep themselves – in games and, and give themselves some chance to win to, as the tournament sta- is staring them directly in the face. And, and hard to believe this may be a team that plays on Thursday night, which none of us saw coming um, three or four, you know, three, three, just ago. three weeks ago. Yeah. They're going to, they were going to Gainesville seven and one played Florida on February 1st. Yeah. And they Nobody, were seven, seven, one in the league. Yeah. I mean, tw- 21 rough days in the month of February for this basketball team. They've got to get well, and they've got to get their mojo back, and we'll see if they can before uh, they get into tournament play. And the biggest mojo is consistency, which has been the hardest thing for this team to grasp uh, all, all season long. So we'll see what that looks like. That's going to do it for this edition of the Craven Wings Full Court Press. He is Rob Lewis. I'm Brent Hubbs. Tennessee falls to Texas A&M by a score of 68-63. to 63. When you're Craven Wings, it's got to be Craven Wings. Online at CravenWings.com.